Alright, David Harry here. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to put together an Andy Cine Lunchbox One SSD for an Atomos Ninja V or a V Plus. Now the important thing with this particular build of the Lunchbox One is that I am not going to be using the standard Samsung T5 SSD to put inside the Lunchbox One. What I'm going to be doing here is to use an off-the-shelf MSATA SSD to put inside the lunchbox one now if you are into these things as in stuff to do with the ninja keep an eye on the channel because i'll be doing some more videos about the ninja itself and also more videos about ssds for it as we can see here, I've got a number of different Andy Cine products. So I've also got the Lunchbox 2, the Lunchbox 3, and also the SATA to USB-C reader, which is what you can connect to the Lunchboxes to offload data. So I will be doing videos about all that stuff soon as well. Now, if you find this video useful in any way as it's playing through, please do give it a thumbs up and a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome. But before I get into this, a quick word about this video sponsor who is routermods.co.uk at routermods.co.uk you will find a wide selection of all the latest wireless internet routers these range from off-the-shelf routers by all the major brands through to professionally pre-modified routers you can also send your router to router mods and have them professionally modify it for you. And they also have a comprehensive selection of antennas. So head over to routermods.co.uk for all your wireless internet needs. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to run through what comes inside of the box. So the first thing here is the top of the enclosure. This piece here is the middle and the bottom piece of the enclosure. We'll kind of see how this all fits together shortly so you'll get a better idea. And then this piece here is an MSATA to SATA converter. So this is what converts our MSATA SSD to the SATA interface. Then what we've got here, this is like a welcome card by Andy Cine. This is not any kind of manual. Then over here, what we have got are four M3 screws which are used to hold the enclosure together. Then next to that, we have got an M3 Allen key which is then obviously used to stitch the whole thing together. Then what we've got here are two tiny Phillips screws. Now we don't actually get a Phillips screwdriver in the set, but I will show you what size I'm using shortly. And these two Phillips screws here are for holding down the MSATA SSD inside the converter unit here. Then what we have got are a few thermal pads. And then finally, we have got an Andy Cine cleaning cloth. And then what we're looking at here is the MSATA SSD that I'm going to be using. And this really is a generic one. And I can say that for sure because there's actually nothing printed on the memory module itself. There will be something printed on the controller module, but this is about as generic as you can get. So obviously also what I'm doing with this video is just to show you that you don't necessarily need need to use a Samsung T5 in order to put one of these together. Now just before I install the MSATA SSD into the adapter here, I just need to point out something really quickly. We have got these two standoffs on this top edge here, which are basically used to screw down the MSATA SSD into it. But what it is, these may have some plastic covers over the top of them here. Now I don't know if we're going to see here, but the one on this side doesn't have any plastic cover on because I've taken it off. But this one does. Now that's going to stop you from putting the screw in. So what you need to do, if you just, if I kind of get this from the side, hopefully, just get something like you know a very thin screwdriver or something, and then just pop through the back there and then pop out the plastic piece that might be covering it. That's just something to keep an eye on in case yours is the same, in which case you're not gonna be able to screw your screws in with that little plastic cover piece on the top. Now, just before I start putting on the thermal pads onto the MSATA SSD, I'm just going to show you how that fits inside of the adapter, as this may help you visualize the whole thing a little bit easier. So as you can see here, this is the MSATA SSD. And on the pin side here of the actual SSD, we've got a cutout in the pins there. Now, if we have a look at where that plugs into onto the actual adapter, 
it too has got like this little bump piece here so what that basically means is is that you can only insert the mSATA ssd one way so let me just quickly show you so if i turn it around this way it obviously won't go in there because it's not lining up with the pins and the notch however if i put it the right way around and then if I just pop it in there, as we can see, it will go in because it is all lined up. Now, just something to quickly show you about the thermal pads, which is probably going to be easier to see it in this angle, as opposed to when I go closer up onto the SSD. So on each side of the thermal pad, we have a protective layer. So as you can see there, this protective layer just pulls away from one side. And then it's the same on the other side, if I can get at it. There it is. So there's the other protective layer there. So basically, the thermal pad is sandwiched in between these two thin bits of plastic. And what we have to do is to make sure that we remove those bits of plastic when we are applying the thermal pad to the SSD. Now, I'm making a point of saying that right now, just in case you don't actually see me do it when we go closer onto the SSD or in case it's not clear enough as I'm doing it. So as far as the positioning of the thermal pads are concerned, usually you would just put these on the component side which has got the chips on it. However, in this instance, I'm going to put half of the thermal pad on one side and the other half on the other side of the SSD. So thereby covering both sides even though the other side doesn't have any chips on it. I'm just doing this because it definitely will help to transmit heat to the case a bit better. So what I'm going to do first of all is just cut this thermal pad in half okay so as we could see there this is not an exact science or anything i've literally just cut that in half with a pair of scissors now what i'm going to do is to trim one end of one side here just so that it matches up a bit better across this side of the ssd and by that what i mean is i want to avoid the screws there and i want to avoid the pins at the bottom so i just want to cut a piece of that pad out just so that it covers the bit here from where the chip is down to before where the pins start here. In fact, I'm just going to score a cut point with me scissors here just so I know exactly where to cut. So about there will do for me. So what I'm going to do now is just to remove the underside bit of plastic here before I place the pad down onto the SSD. It's just that piece that I'd shown earlier on, although I don't know whether we get to see it properly right now, but there we go that's off now let me just try and line this up as best as possible and yeah as far as i'm concerned that's okay now mine is a little bit wonky at the top there but that's not going to cause us any problems because all the chips are actually covered underneath and as we can see the cut of the pad itself doesn't interfere with where the screw holes are and the cut doesn't get in the way of where the pins are on the ssd and once again although it might be unnecessary to put a thermal pad onto this side of the ssd i'm going to do that anyways so once again i'm just going to score myself a little cut point here and do the exact same thing i'm just going to slice that bit off there and then place the thermal pad on that side of the ssd and then before i go any further i'm just going to make sure that i have removed the remaining bits of plastic from both sides of the thermal pads and with both sides of the thermal pads now fully exposed i am just going to slide in the mSATA ssd into the slot there on the adapter. And now I'm just gonna screw down the mSATA SSD onto the adapter with the two supplied little tiny Phillips screws here. And this is the size of bit that I'm using, which is PZ00. Doesn't mean anything to me, but that might help other people. So there we go. Let me just line up that screw there. And there we go. That first one is going in. And now for the second screw. And now what I'm going to do is to take the mSATA SSD inside of its adapter here and place it into this part of the enclosure. Now this again can only go in one way. So if I just tip this over like that, and this is the correct way to put this in. And as you can see, that is just seated nice and firm inside that part of the enclosure. And then the last thing to do is to screw down the top plate 
onto the rest of the enclosure and as you can see here this is the correct orientation for the top plate so literally just place it over the rest of the enclosure and then line up all the holes in the top plate to the screw holes in the enclosure and then start screwing in those m3 screws and just get them all tightened down as far as they will go and then that will be the completion of the entire unit done okay so just to summarize a little bit here now to finish this video off these lunchbox ssds are actually quite straightforward to put together just set yourself maybe 20 minutes half an hour's worth of your time just to sit down and do it properly and it really is a very straightforward process however the one thing that it is beyond that is quite possibly a very cost effective way to put together ssds for your ninja now one thing to bear in mind with what i've done in this particular video is to use an ssd in this lunchbox one which isn't the same as what like most people will be putting in it as in a t5 ssd now because of that you obviously have to be careful about the types of ssds you're going to be putting inside the lunchbox one because they do have to be fast enough to record at the frame rates and also the resolutions that you want to record at on the ninja because don't forget some drives that you can use with the ninja might say record 1080 up to 60 frames per second but may not be able to do say 4k or even 25 frames per second because the ssd itself may not be fast enough so like i say just keep an eye on like the kind of drive you're putting inside the lunchbox one however i would say that if you have got any m sata ssds just kind of laying around you may as well just grab hold of yourself one of these lunchbox ones and try them out in the lunchbox one anyway before you look at other solutions because you may well have fast enough drives to put in the lunchbox one to do say 4k 60 on the ninja anyways that will do it for this video there will be amazon links in the video description below if you've liked the video please give it a thumbs up and a sub to the channel once again will be absolutely tremendous i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now